The Frankie DeBusk Show is a special presentation of the Pioneer Sports Network. The Frankie DeBusk Show with head coach Frankie DeBusk and the voice of the Pioneers, Brian Staten. Brought to you by Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Your Greenville Light and Power System, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Green Coach Tours, proudly serving the traveling public since 1945. Andrew Johnson Bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Home owned and operated with locations in Johnson City, Jonesboro, Morristown, Cleveland, and Greenville. Creekside Markets, don't pass by, stop by, with three locations in Greene County. Special consideration from Comcast Cable through Xfinity. And now, the voice of the Pioneers, Brian Staten. Numbers to think about. Three years, 11 months, 20 days, or a total of 1450 days. It's 20, 20 games, but the biggest number, 14 and 10. Welcome into the Frankie DeBus Show. I'm Brian Staten. I'll be joined by Pioneer Coach Frankie DeBus coming up. The 14-10, the final, as the Tusculum Pioneers knocked off the Wingate Bulldogs, ending the 20-game road losing streak that had amassed three years, 11 months, 20 days, or 1,450 days. A lot of numbers into this game. Not a whole lot of numbers offensively. These weren't the highest rated offenses in the South Atlantic Conference. Both schools are dealing with multi-year starting quarterback replacements. Malcolm Pendergrass for the Pioneers, a redshirt freshman wide receiver in the spring, asked to play quarterback, and Kyle Johnson, a redshirt sophomore quarterback who watched Robbie Nollenweg play as an academic All-American from a year ago. Yes, two All-American quarterbacks replaced. So, seventh and eighth in the conference were the offenses both for Tusculum and Wingate going into this contest. It was all homecoming. It was the 19th meeting between these two schools, and the Bulldogs have been riding a pretty good high, including last year's 41-33 win, a uh, Nolan Wegg cordell showdown from Pioneer Field, in which the Pioneers rallied from 16 down, recovered an onside kick, but were kept out of the end zone in the waning seconds of the game last year. Similar this year, except the defenses were on display. Number nine, Nick Napolitano, one of the most feared defensive linemen in the league this year, was somewhat neutralized. Number 96, Kashad Lyons, was not neutralized for the Pioneers and might be playing the best defense of anybody in the league at this particular time with four hits behind the line, two sacks, and five quarterback hurries on Kyle Johnson. Now the game wasn't without its dramatics, that's for sure, as the Wingate Bulldogs took a 10 to nothing lead. Then Malcolm Pendergrass goes out, the starting quarterback, the franchise, the leader, done. Insert five-year uh, quarterback in his fifth year as a senior in Kyle Dickey. The young man out of McDonough, Georgia, probably nice to have a fifth year senior backup. So he comes in, rides the ship, very poised, and we say he didn't lose the game. Forget that. Kyle Dickey had to win the game and did, rallying the troops from 10 down. The Pioneers knock off the Wingate Bulldogs by a final score of 14 to 10. All that streak, all that thing is over. The coach isn't here, so I can talk about those types of things. It was one of the most brutal road trips coming back in the last four years after games. Joe Bird and I didn't have a whole lot to say coming back. As a matter of fact, Joe slept for most of the three hours this year coming back from Wingate University. We'll talk about why we were not sleeping during the game. A thriller from Irwin Belk Stadium as the Pioneers spoil homecoming. We're back right after this on the Frankie DeBus Show. Your Greenville Light and Power System, an electrical distributor of TVA, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Your Greenville Light and Power is dedicated to excellence in service and reliability. Visit online at glps.net. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo proudly serves Tusculum College and supports Pioneer football. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Showtime. 
Welcome back into the Frankie DeBus Show. Tuscaloosa knocks off Wingate 14 to 10 as we welcome in Pioneer Coach Frankie DeBus. And we'll start. Uh, we can sit here and say all the numbers and everything that we want to. It's over. Is there a sense of uh, accomplishment for this football team? Uh, you know, Brian, I, we didn't talk a whole lot about the, the streak or the, the not so good streak. We uh, we just went and played football, and we gave ourselves chances in every every ball game, and it's. Uh, it's one of those things that you don't want to talk about, but thank goodness that monkey's off our back and we get an opportunity to move on. And I'm just really happy for our kids. I mean, they were they were so excited, and they're toward the end of the game. They started talking about it, and you know, it's just one of those things you don't really want to address it. But uh, obviously, it was in their minds, and uh, happy for them, and happy they had an opportunity to enjoy the bus ride home, and uh, happy we've put that thing behind us and we can continue to move on. There. And the best thing about it was we we beat a good football team. We we played a great football game defensively, and found a way to do just enough offensively and had a great special teams plan and just really proud of how they played. Let's talk about in this game. Let's go ahead and get to the highlights. Tunskillum versus Wingate. It is the 19th meeting. We play from Irwin Belk Stadium. It's the third time we were the homecoming opponent for the Bulldogs and coach will start. Wingate has the opening kickoff as you win the toss, defer to the second half. Here it is as the Bulldogs have driven the almost the length of the field. They began the drive from the 29-yard line. Here they are inside the 10 on first down and goal, second down and goal. Nestor Lantiqua goes seven yards. So it's third down and goal, and the redshirt sophomore quarterback, Kyle Johnson, trying to get into the end zone. Yeah, you know, a young quarterback sometimes make mistakes here, and he really should have just thrown this away or ate it. We're putting pressure on him and throws it into to a crowd there in the end zone. And, again, look how excited our kids are getting. You know, you know great play there. They were battling over who's going to catch that football, but uh, you know, proud for our kids to make that big play. Good play, and then the very first play, the very next play, Pendergrass has the seam, but I think the knee knocks the ball loose. Yeah, he didn't tuck it away, and uh, it's 100% you know, his fault for putting it on the ground. And I wasn't very happy after that, needless to say. Uh, he actually heard a few words, but we got to let it go and got to move on. All right, Wingate would get a field goal out of that as the Pioneer defense would keep them out of the end zone. Just eight yards for Wingate. So the Pioneers, two drives later after they have punted the ball away, begins at the 23. It's DJ Haney getting to start in the backfield today. Five yards, Pendergrass complete to Justin Houston for five yards, and you almost sense that Malcolm is getting into a, a better rhythm. Yeah, I thought we were doing some really good things, picking up three and four and five, and here DJ, I wish you'd make that guy miss and get a few more yards, but uh, DJ is going to be a great football player. He's a young kid here from from Greenville, Tennessee. It's making some good things happen for us, and we're throwing and catching and moving the chains, getting first downs, hitting Justin. And we put Big West Powell out there at, tie, at, at split end to give us some extra blocking, and I uh, thought Mark Kolb did a great job calling this game, and that was a good move on his behalf there to give us an opportunity to once again uh, get a first down. Third down and a yard. DJ Haney goes forward for two yards. He had 10 carries, 25 yards on the day. Pendergrass a quick out again to Justin Houston. This one goes for 15 yards. Good downfield blocking but even a better run. Great effort there by, by uh, Justin Houston but a great job by Wes get, getting his man and giving uh, Justin a chance to carry the football. Speaking of Wes Powell, two catches for five yards this year but he was a big time factor in this one. It was a great catch here. Went up and got it at its highest point. Wasn't a very good ball but a great job there by Wes Powell going up and grabbing it. Wes is just an unbelievable person and I want him to have some success on the field and Great, uh, great opportunity for him there, and we end up making a big catch. Justin Houston interfered with as he goes down the field inside the 10, so the Eric Maypole's pass interference penalty takes the ball inside the 10. Into the red zone, Tusculum by the numbers percentage, not doing a great job, 63% scoring this season. Uh, inside the red zone, it will be D.J. Haney who will go forward for about three yards. D.J. Haney again for about two yards, and then just an unfortunate play. I think the defender uh, got in the eyesight of Diliberto, but this one gets on him in a hurry. Yeah, we run that play and rep it every single day, and Jonathan's got to make that catch. I mean, it was a drop ball. Not only was it a drop ball, it was a drop touchdown, and uh, we got to make those plays, and then we send our kicker out there, and, and he, he doesn't kick it very good. He's got to make that kick. Uh, that's unacceptable. No excuses for it. We have two, two guys there that's got to make plays, and this didn't make them. 
11 plays, 74 yards, no points for the Pioneers. They get inside the five-yard line. The 20-yarder is missed. So the Wingate Bulldogs would take over first and 10 as they would begin the drive. And a good pressure all day by Kashad Lyons. They didn't block Kashad all day long. He's, uh, he's having an unbelievable year. Just happy for Kashad. And uh, hopefully he can stay healthy and finish this thing out. But uh, wherever he lined up on Saturday, that guy was having a hard time blocking him. And that's just tremendous pressure there. And he's long and athletic and lanky and made a bunch of plays for us. And I'm just really proud of Kashad's effort. Continue this drive. We're into the second quarter. Wingate picks up a first down third and 15 on a hold by the Pioneers. So it's first and 10. Lantiqua rushes for eight yards, and it's first and 10. And Kyle Johnson finds his top target in Jordan Berry. And he did a good job keeping Jordan Berry in check. He'd had six catches for just 62 yards. I thought we did a great job. I was actually looking at some notes of Addison Williams, our defensive back coach, and put in there that we dominated the biggest part of the game. And I thought we did there. Uh, we have a senior that needs to wrap up and make that play, which should be a tackle for a loss. And unfortunately, he squeaks out of there and ends up getting four. But we got to get him on the ground. So it is first and goal for the Bulldogs, and this will be Nestor Lantiqua who will take it in from nine yards. And the Bulldogs have taken a 10 to nothing lead, 15 plays, 80 yards, 621 off the clock just after the missed field goal. So the Pioneers come out on offense. It was Haney for three yards, Pendergrass incomplete to Powell, and then on third down and seven, Malcolm Pendergrass takes off, and this would be his last play of the game. Yeah, unfortunately there he hurts his knee, and I wasn't sure exactly what happened, uh, but you can see it there sort of getting wrapped up underneath him, and it was a late hit penalty uh, on, on that play. But unfortunate for Malcolm, he's, uh, he's, he's messed up his knee, and I don't think he's out for the season, but he is a little gimpy today, and hopefully we can get him rehabbed and get him back going again. So the drive would result into a punt as Kyle Dickey would come in. The drive began at the two-yard line. The Bulldogs come about to this point, and it would be, once again, Kashad Lines with a bunch of pressure. Great play by Kashad. That's one of those plays that we have almost made in years past from, from a Kashad line standpoint. And this year, he's making those plays for us. So it is third down and 10. Johnson again looking for Jordan Berry and good coverage by Evan Dansby. Great job. Great job. I thought we really did a good job in the secondary. and uh, They threw it around a little bit but didn't have a lot of success. And make them punt and send our attack team on the field. And, uh, we actually just have something simple called here, but Evan Altizer, who's from over in that area, actually, he had a lot of su supporters at the game, has a great 34-yard punt return, and heck, I thought he was going to score on this, but it gave us great field position. So Altizer, who goes 34 yards on the return, sets up shot first and 10 for the Pioneers at the 26. And the fifth-year senior, here's Kyle Dickey. Of course, he played the last series when Pendergrass was injured, but he's in now. Fernando Smith, his first carry, just a yard, and then Dickey, to Justin Houston, and those two aren't on the same page. Get a bit of a false start, then you even move them back further, and Kyle Dickey says, I can be Malcolm Pendergrass too. Does a great job here. Season opening, season window, gets it tucked, gets us a big first down, gets inside the 10-yard line. Uh, one thing I liked about Kyle on Saturday, he just went out there and was the general and ran the offense and didn't make mistakes. And, uh, you know, when, we, when you're calling a different cadence by a different guy, it, it sort of screws you up a little bit. We did jump off sides a few times, but... Here he makes a, you know, a little bit of low, low throw, but Dion did a great job getting his hands underneath that football. And I never actually saw the touchdown signal. I was looking everywhere. No one really gave it. And uh, finally we get uh, a, b a big throw and a big catch and a big seven points. Oh, I'm with you. I, I kept looking and I kept asking, is it a touchdown? Is it a touchdown? It was. And so the Pioneers take the short field after the punt return and make it 10-7, to seven, four plays, 26 yards a minute, 13 off the clock. Dion Hicks' first touchdown reception of the year. So the Bulldogs get the ball back and good pressure again. Johnson incomplete to Nestor Lantiqua and then Kyle Johnson will meet Emmanuel Bunbley who has probably played the best football defensively over the last three weeks. He's really getting better. He's doing a lot of great things, putting pressure on the quarterback. Here comes Kashad. You know, Kashad gets a lot of credit for that right there, that pressure. And here comes Emmanuel from behind and gets him on the ground. Emmanuel's also from over in that neck of the woods. He had his uh, is a family there watching too, so it's good to see those guys have some success. So the Pioneers and the Wingate Bulldogs at the half, 10 to 7. Tusculum would get a drive, uh, get some, run some time right there. You took some timeouts to try to keep your offense out there, but go three and out. Wingate would get it, run one play, and go to the half. We go to the second half when we return with the Pioneers down 10 to 7 when the Frankie DeBus show continues. Andrew Johnson Bank was founded on conservative banking principles. Over the last 30 years, they have steadily built their balance sheet and increased capital by following prudent lending principles and avoiding risky investments. In uncertain times, you can continue to count on Andrew Johnson Bank, your locally owned community bank. 
a strong heritage, a stronger future. Andrew Johnson Bank, member FDIC. Green Coach Charters and Tours has been proudly serving the traveling public for over 65 years and is the official carrier of Tusculum College Athletics. If you have never traveled by Green Coach, may we invite you to join them for an exciting travel adventure. Visit online at greencoach.com. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show. Once again, the voice of the pioneers, Ryan Staten. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBusk Show. Tusculum trails Wingate 10 to 7 at the half. Coach, you go into the locker room. You have to feel good about yourself. You don't have your starting quarterback. What was the sense of the team? It was, it was kind of a weird first half. Your defense making a lot of plays behind the line of scrimmage. Your secondary is making it tough on Johnson, giving their defensive line to get there, and then your quarterback goes down. I actually made a comment at halftime that Kyle Dickey was getting ready to go out and play the, the, the half of his life. And, we were going to jump, get behind him and support him and jump on his shoulders and let him take us to victory. I told our football team that, and they got excited about it. You know, Kyle has, uh, has been here for five years, and it hasn't gone his way. And, you know, when you're a backup quarterback, it's, it's a challenge at times. And I told him after the game how proud of him I was and just going out there and running the show and buying his time and handling everything right on and off the field. And his parents were there to see him get a chance to play and lead us to victory. And I really felt good about how we were at halftime. We knew we were in the ball game. We knew we were playing well defensively. We need something good to happen offensively, and eventually we get around to getting that done. But uh, who knew what was going to happen in the second half? And we talked about that before the game started. So our, our players understood where we were, and we just had to go finish. All right, let's take a look at your second half. It was an interesting third quarter, to say the least. Back and forth we went with a bunch of three and outs for both sides, offensively and defensively. We'll pick up the action. The third offensive possession of the third quarter for the Wingate Bulldogs and obviously they're starting deep in their own territory. Lantiqua, no, uh, for no yards, actually fumbled the football, recovered by Lantiqua. Then Gavin, an end around for eight yards, and then another big play by Kashad Lyons. Can't block Kashad, and there's Lakeith Brown, another guy that had a fantastic game. Players of the week together there just did a great job getting him on the ground, making them punt it again. So the Pioneers take over on offense, and you know we can come out here and say the Kyle Dickey show, but what Kyle did was not make it a show. It was not about him, and uh, he managed the game quite nicely. And Fernando Smith, for some reason, has just been a different runner in the second half. Yeah, he's done well. You know, we we've got to get Fernando on the field. He's got to he's got to handle his responsibilities off the field so we can get him on the field. But once we get his hands on the football, he makes some big plays, makes some great things happen here. He does all this on his own. Picks up a big 10 or 12 yard gain, converts on third down, and keeps our drive alive. Fernando Smith, 11 carries, 50 yards, along of 18, average four and a half yards per carry on the day. Still in the third quarter, but we're winding down as Fernand as uh, Dickey was looking for Justin Houston. This one incomplete, handed off on second down and 10 to Fernando Smith, and this is what he can do: make it third and manageable. Broke a tackle, you know, and made a big play, give us third and manageable situation, and. We got an opportunity here to make a great decision. Good call by Mark uh, Cole. Good decision there by Kyle. Great catch by Wesley. And uh, we're moving the chains once again. All right, so we've moved into the fourth quarter. And the Pioneers again on the drive, as you just saw. Fernando Smith for about a yard. Then looking for Justin Houston. Missed Diliberto right there, but we're going to come back to that here in, in just a moment. And uh, Justin Houston, this is a wonderful play. And the decoy, again, is your 6'10 tight end. No doubt. We, uh, we set this up earlier. We should have hit Dilberto there on a few plays before that. But we got them all to bite. Kyle made a good decision, set his feet. And Justin ran a simple route and hit him there and got in the end zone. Big play for the Pioneers and give us some points. Justin Houston, four touchdowns in the last two games. 12 catches, just 82 yards. The touchdown and a long of 23 on the day. The Pioneers have battled back. They were 10 down. They have taken a 13 to 10 lead and with the point after, make it 14 to 10. Nine plays, 64 yards, 212 off the clock. For Wingate, their ensuing possession would be three and out, three plays, just four yards. So they give the ball back to the Pioneers and Tusculum taking over in their own territory, deep in their own territory. Houston for just a yard, but again, this is. This is a very nice drive. This is one of those drives that Kyle Dickey did not lose the game for us. Great call right here by Mark Kolb to hit Fernando coming out of the backfield. It's third and nine. We end up picking up about 14 or 15 yards and moving the chains. And if you notice the time of possession from the first half to the second half, it, it went our way completely in the second half, and it was because we were able to convert on some third downs. So this was Fernando Smith, 16 yards. Then Fernando Smith breaking tackles for 18 yards. Good football player making some really good moves and some really good plays. And, 
uh, running the ball hard, breaking tackles, and giving us a chance to, uh, to stay alive. Let the big dog eat, they say. Fernando Smith up the middle again. If he just is able to bounce it out, he maybe he scores right there. As it is, just maintaining positive yards. Pick up of two. This one will lose a couple of yards as Wingate. Pretty good coverage on this one. West Powell holding the block out on the end. So it's third down and ten. And uh, this one, just too far, we're going to come back and revisit this play, however, and there it is. Uh, the Pioneers take three minutes and 16 seconds off the clock. Good punt by Cantrell, pinning Wingate inside their 10 at the 8-yard line. It was just a 30-yard punt, but the Bulldogs had to start deep in their own territory. I thought our punter did an unbelievable job. He hit four punts inside the 20, a couple of them were inside the 10, a couple were inside the 5, actually. They did a great job on changing field position. And, I do believe the special teams game is what elevated us to be able to win and play great on defense, but uh, when you can down punts where we were able to down them, it makes it a long field for those guys to travel. Mike Iese dialed up the pressure, bringing a blitz by Matt Simon, and Johnson picked it up late, but that's a loss of eight on the play by Matt Simon. Great play by Matt. Matt's a true freshman from down in Georgia, and he's really making some good plays. He's got a chance to be a really good football player. Just got to learn the ins and the outs to everything about college football. But, he had a really good day on Saturday, and hopefully he can, uh, he can move on from it. Eventually, the Bulldogs would punt the ball away, so the Pioneers get it. And this is the end of that drive, and this is the play that would have sealed it. And a lot of people are going, why did he throw it in that? Well, Wingate still had a timeout, so you might as well throw it and try to end the game. Absolutely. I mean, it was a great call. It was a great decision. We just didn't hit him. I mean, that's part of the game. And uh, I thought Mark made a really good call there, and he was open. We just got to convert. And, Fortunately for us, our, our punter punts it where it needs to be punted, and senior Evan Dansby does what he's supposed to be coached to do. He gave a fair catch signal, and Evan gets down there on the one-yard line and downs the ball on the one, and I quite frankly think that was the play of the day right there to give us a chance to, uh, to hang on for the win. All right, so here it is. 99 yards is what we can get and where they have to go, and coach, they come right out right away and get out of trouble in a hurry. Tell you what, that was a great catch. A young man made two or three great catches on this drive, and uh, we, we let him run by us right here on 4th and 10. Uh, we've got we to gotta keep that from happening. He ends up making an unbelievable catch, but we got to do a little better job uh, covering him in that case. Jalen Gavin, five catches, 75 yards, and three of them occurred on 4th down and three of them on this drive. That could have been a backbreaker. Jordan Berry just off his fingertips. That was a 3rd down or a 2nd down and one play. And so Wingate, again, without any timeouts, they are now – under a minute after this incompletion, you go third down and about a yard, and Kyle Johnson will find Gavin once again. That was his go-to guy on fourth down. Uh, they're, they're running the clock. He's getting out of bounds. They actually put a great drive together here. And, uh, they executed it all the way to the very end, and, uh, you know, quite frankly, Brian, they, uh, they didn't make a play when they needed to, and uh, we found a way to hang on, but thought they did some good things. I thought our kids kept playing hard here. I didn't really want to call timeout because we were stopping them, but here after the quarterback got loose and got down to the 25-yard line, I felt like we needed to, to regroup and uh, get us on the sidelines and talk about it and try to keep uh, something bad from happening. All right, Pioneers would take a timeout. Again, we're under 30 seconds right now in the game. This is Brian Caffrey with the catch at about the 20, and little did we know at the time when he was making that catch, Caffrey would have virtually the game winner on his fingertips right here in the corner of the end zone. Actually a really good ball by their uh, quarterback, and I think we got just enough of the piece of it there from Akeem, and Looks like he uh, bobbled that ball going out of bounds, and we end up getting a break there. And we got to we got to cover him a little better. But uh, fortunately for us, they did not make that play. So the ball was bobbled. Then actually, we didn't come down with it when he went to the ground for Caffrey. So it's fourth down and five. Kyle Johnson was looking for his go-to target, and he overthrew him. He did that quite often on the day because of the pressure, I think, by the Pioneers and the formation. You don't necessarily practice but you enjoy calling when it is your time, the victory formation. Best formation in football when it's on your side, and what a great feeling for our players and jubilation that they had on the, on the sidelines and on the field. And happy for Kyle Dickey and uh, just happy that our football team found a way to win. You know, there were some things that I was thinking during the radio broadcast, what would I say, how would I do it, and I chose, I didn't want to make a big deal out of the streak itself either. There were the numbers, there were the minutes, there were the days the months and all that, we could have counted down. And I felt like, no, you know what? They just won the game, and you had to go out and just win a game. And that's what you did Saturday. Well, you know, we have been in that situation so many times, Brian. And uh, Saturday, we found a way to hang on. Our kids made some plays. And we have to we have put our backup quarterback in the game who runs the show like we'd want him to. We got guys on defense that uh, are making big-time plays. And our special teams game did what we need them to do. And 
we were in a dogfight from the very beginning and found a way to win a close one. And this football team really needed that. Our players needed that. They needed that feeling of, of accomplishment, and we uh, we were able to do that on Saturday. And Pioneers knock off the Wingate Bulldogs in the 19th meeting, get their seventh win all time against Wingate. And of course, it's their first win at Irwin Belk Stadium since 2002. That year was also homecoming when the Pioneers uh, played that game. Their first homecoming game was at Walter Bickett Stadium, 1997. It was uh, a Doug Malone-led Wingate Bulldog team from right here in the Greenville area, and they knocked off Tushkillen 51-13. to Lowest scoring game since the 21-3 game back in 2007, a 14-10 win for the Pioneers. A second come from behind by double digits this season for Tusculum, down 11 to Newberry, down 10 to the Bulldogs as they get the win. We'll come back and we'll meet some of our players responsible for that win and, and finalize our conversation with Pioneer coach Frankie DeBusk when we return right after this for the Frankie DeBusk Show. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo proudly serves Tusculum College and supports Pioneer football. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Your Greenville Light and Power System and electrical distributor of TVA, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Your Greenville Light and Power is dedicated to excellence in service and reliability. Visit online at glps.net. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show. Once again, the voice of the pioneers, Ryan Staten. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show. The pioneers knock off the Wingate Bulldogs, a final of 14 to 10. One of the young men who had a phenomenal game, who's had a phenomenal game over the last month. As a matter of fact, if he's not the Appleby student of the month at Tusculum College, as I'm starting the petition right now, I'll be highly disappointed. Kashad Lyons, we call him Big Country. He's a young man out of Ellenwood, Georgia, is having just a banner year. Now already with 67 tackles to his credit. He had four tackles for loss just last week, including two sacks alone against Kyle Johnson and five quarterback hurries. Afterwards, we had a chance to catch up with him earlier this week, just before practice, our Applebee's interview with Kashad Lyons. Our Applebee's interview is with Kashad Lyons here for the Frankie DeBus Show. Kashad, number one, we can talk about a streak, and I think you guys had a lighthearted moment after the game and kind of made light of the fact that the streak was over. Is there a sense of accomplishment with that, or is the win the most important thing? Um, both. I think the um, a sense of accomplishment was definitely established, and um, the win was definitely important too. But just breaking the curse, I think, was the most important thing. Can you, can you, can you break down the days? Do you know the days? Um, I heard it was something like 1,400 days or something like that, four years and a couple months. That's pretty good memory. It's uh, 1,450 days. It's pretty remarkable, uh, 2010 to even think about. But let's talk about the game itself. You guys put a lot of pressure on Kyle Johnson, a, a redshirt sophomore quarterback, and I think it had to be the game plan. He, he wasn't as accurate as Nolan Wegg from a year ago. Did you feel you had to put pressure on him to be successful in the game? That was definitely the game plan. If we put pressure on him, he would make bad decisions, and you know we would come up with come out with the victory. All right. And from play number one, I don't think they could defend you. Did you find it easy going on Saturday to get into the backfield? Well, I didn't really think about it too much. I just went hard every play, and you know just did the best of my abilities to make plays, and just did what the coach asked me to do. And in this defense, I think a lot of it, what you're asked to do also sets up linebackers. I think a lot of people had a successful day. Keith Brown, I think, of 14 tackles. Um, do you feel as if the defensive line set the tone for the rest of the defense too? Definitely, definitely. It all starts with the defensive line. And if we have a great day, everybody has a great day. All right, the last drive, uh, I was biting my nails, I have to admit, up in, that, uh, in the booth. Uh, talk to me just about the last drive and what you guys felt like you had to do in order to secure that win. Well, the last drive, we knew for sure they was going to throw the ball. So we um, we came out in a different package, you know. I went down the nose, and um, we, we just really couldn't keep contained, you know. But um, we um, we had made adjustments, caught a little timeout, and we made the right decision. Right decision at the right time. The Pioneers get the win. So, Kashad, you move forward, you move on from that. But offensively, let me just ask you, when you see a leader like Malcolm go down who's been there and then a guy like Kyle Dickey, you know, a guy who's been here as long as you've been here, uh, you know, one of these guys that comes out and to do what he did, how proud are you of a guy like that? I'm very proud of him. You know, five, fifth year senior, you know, he, he's we expect him to make plays like that. You know, on a, whenever, his, whenever his card is called, we expect him to make plays. So I'm proud of him. 
And he did that. A- absolutely. Senior day coming up. It's odd. We've got two home games left. you got senior day coming up. It'll be against Pembroke. Obviously important for you guys to uh, continue this. You want to win this thing on, on, a, on a positive note. So how do you go out and do that against Pembroke? Well, against Pembroke, they're very, they're very athletic. They're kind of like um, the team we just faced. So we just really have to come out and have a great week of practice. They call him country, big country. It's Kashad Lyons. In the game, seven tackles, four behind the line of scrimmage, two sacks, and five quarterback hurries. Our Applebee's player interview. Thanks to Kashad Lyons for our Applebee's interview for the Frankie DeBus Show. Now, yeah, not just Kashad had a big day, but a lot of guys had a big day. Let's go ahead and meet our players of the week. We'll start on offense with our Sodexo Offensive Player of the Week. He came in pressed into duty, the senior out of McDonough, Georgia, Luella, Luella High School. He's Kyle Dickey. He was 18 of 31 on the day for 125 yards and threw for two touchdowns, one to Deion Hicks, one to Justin Houston. He also had five carries for 21 yards and a career-long 23-yard rush for Kyle Dickey. Think about what he did coming into today. He had one pass completed this year for just 20 yards. Last year he was 9 of 16 for just 69 yards and in his freshman year, redshirt freshman year, was 37 of 61 for 400 yards. Congratulations to Kyle Dickey. He earned the award this week. Our Greenville Light and Power Defensive Players of the Week. You've already heard from one of them, Kashad Lyons, the senior out of Ellenwood, Georgia, Woodland High School. Seven tackles, four for loss, two sacks. For his season, 67 tackles, 13 tackles for loss, and seven sacks. All of this leading the team in tackles from a defensive lineman position. For his career, 159 tackles, 23 for loss, and 11 sacks. Lakeith Brown, the redshirt freshman out of Athens, Georgia, Cedar Shoals High School. In three, in two of the last three weeks, he has set a new career best in tackles for a game. He finishes with 14 in the contest, a new career high, a tackle for loss. Now on the year, 54 tackles and four of them for loss. Our Green Coach Tour Special Teams Players of the Week. Our freshman punter out of Sparta, Tennessee, White County High School is Hunter Cantrell. Don't pay attention to the average, pay attention to what he did with his leg. Eight punts, a 35.4 yard average, a long of 44, but he pinned Wingate inside the 20 four different occasions. Tusculum punted many times from their own 35 or their 40 yard line. He had four inside the 20, but two of them inside the five, one inside the one at the end of the game. Evan Dansby, the senior from Augusta, Georgia, Richmond Academy, did have a pass breakup in the contest, has 105 tackles for his career, but what he did was get down there to down the punt inside the one yard line as he was one of our special teams players of the week. Now, it's time for our Andrew Johnson Bank call of the game. We talked a little bit about that, but until you see it, you'd have to appreciate it. So we'll let you see it and let you hear it. It's the down punt inside the one. O'Grady snaps it, Cantrell gets the punt, very high, and it will hit at the three, and Evan Dansby holds it inside the one yard line, first and 10 for the Bulldogs, and a phenomenal special teams play. It's time now for our Creekside Market post-game wrap-up. In this game, the numbers are going to be just a bit skewed offensively for the Wingate Bulldogs, primarily because they almost went 99 yards at the end. But it's a good thing we almost forced them to need to go 99 yards. Pioneer offense coming up in this contest uh, for this uh, team was still under 300 yards while Wingate was just over 300 yards for the day, but that's not the biggest part of what was going on. 20 game road losing streak, fifth longest active streak in Division II, over. Last win, November 6, 2010 at Catawba, a span covering three years, 11 months, 20 days, or 1,450 days ago is all over. The 19th meeting between the Pioneers and the Bulldogs goes to the Pioneers. It's just their seventh win in those 19th meeting. In 19 meetings, as Wingate has won five of the last six going in and five in a row at Irwin Belk against the Pioneers. All of that is over. Tusculum was looking for their first win at Wingate since 2002, a span covering 12 years and 21 days. Yeah, you could say a lot of streaks were ended this past Saturday against the Bulldogs. Most definitely. One streak I'd like to see continue is Kashad Lyons. His 67 tackles are tops in the conference and in the region and fourth in the nation amongst defensive linemen. We hope that Kashad Lyons can continue that for the Tusculum Pioneers, especially this week, senior night, senior day against the Pembroke Braves. And that's a look at your Creekside Market post-game wrap-up. A little different way to bring it to you. 
Touch Gillen Pioneers and the Pembroke Braves this Saturday for Senior Day. They'll kick it off at 1.30. Coach Frankie DeBus will chat about them and what's up planned for Senior Day next. That's when the Frankie DeBus Show continues. Andrew Johnson Bank was founded on conservative banking principles. Over the last 30 years, they have steadily built their balance sheet and increased capital by following prudent lending principles and avoiding risky investments. In uncertain times, you can continue to count on Andrew Johnson Bank, your locally owned community bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Andrew Johnson Bank, member FDIC. Creekside Market has three locations in Southern Greene County to serve. So while you're traveling to or from any game, stop by and pick up a Hunt Brothers pizza for those football Friday nights or Saturday afternoons. Creekside Market just off the 107, locations on the Asheville Highway, Camp Creek, and the Irwin Highway. Creekside Markets in Greene County. And Welcome back into the Frankie DeBus Show. The Tuscaloosa Pioneers knock off the Wingate Bulldogs by a final score of 14 to 10. One of the nice guys in the league outside of this guy sitting here to my left was Joe Wright for the Bulldogs. He's fourth in the league and win most wins in a career. Coach DeBus distancing himself just a little bit more with the win. He's third in the league in the most wins in the South Atlantic Conference. Only that behind uh, the king of the hill, that would be Mr. Ken Sparks, and a guy who will play later in the year. Tim Clifton. All right, Coach, we step out of conference play this week, but you feel good. We're sitting here at three and five. Got two wins in the league. A Pembroke team will come in. They've got a little question mark as, as well. We've got a little question mark, you know, what's up in the air. Kyle Dickey plays well. He comes in. He does some things. Malcolm Pendergrass goes out. He may be a little bit banged up. Are there question marks for this team, or are you guys just looking forward to playing the Pembroke Braves? Well, Brian, I, I told our, our kids what we have to do is just go do what we've been doing. we got to execute. we got to have a great week of practice. Uh, I don't know who we're going to end up playing at positions. Obviously, we're talking about the quarterback position. Hopefully, Kyle will step up and have a great week of practice and be able to do it again on Saturday. But, uh, you know, UNC Pembroke come rolling in here with uh, as, a, as an athletic as athletic a team as we will see. Mm -hmm. uh, they compare a lot to Newberry. They lost to Newberry on Saturday 13-6. to uh, So they're obviously playing really well defensively, and they're having some struggles offensively. they got a couple of freshman quarterbacks uh, that are trying to, to get it all together. But... They're a scary football team to be sitting here at one and six, and you know we're sitting here at three and five. They're coming off a close loss. We're coming off a close win. Uh, hopefully, we'll be ready to play and turn it loose and find a way to, to do some good things for four more quarters. All right, I don't ask you to do this very often, but I can think of a guy on the defensive line that plays for LR. I can think of a guy who I thought would have been the best defensive lineman in the league, and Nick Napolitano. I think we neutralized him pretty well last week. Is there anybody playing better in the league than Kashad Lyons right now? Absolutely not. I mean, Kashad's just playing fantastic and. You know, we're playing him all over the place over there, trying to make it hard on anybody they may line up against. And he brings a lot when we put him inside, and he brings a lot to the tackles when we put him outside. He's had an unbelievable year. Uh, he's leading us in tackles, I think, and tackles for loss and sacks. And, you know, we're talking about a defensive lineman here that uh, has potential to, to, uh, to be special here in his senior year and uh, just a great kid that's had a, had a good career but having a great senior year. And he just needs to find a way to, to finish this thing off and hopefully here on senior day against UNC Pembroke. He'll have an opportunity in front of his family to, to play maybe his best game yet. All right, it's interesting. We'll talk more about the seniors. It, we will celebrate senior day Saturday with two home games remaining because we play Brevard on a Thursday. It will be special for some of these guys making that walk. Absolutely. It's always a, a tearjerker moment for the head coach. And uh, you see these guys grow up from 17, 18-year-old snotty kids to 23 and 24-year-old men and get ready to walk across the stage and get on with their lives. And that's what it's truly all about. I tell them I want them to become good husbands and good fathers, and they're getting ready to, to play their last couple of ball games, and they need to understand that, first of all, they need to play as hard as they've ever played because it's getting close to being done. And mm -hmm. secondly, they need to uh, just appreciate the fact they've had a chance to play college football and enjoy being around the camaraderie and 
and, uh, and, and finish off on a positive note. Pioneers knock off the Wingate Bulldogs this past Saturday, 14 to 10. We'll celebrate Senior Day against the Pembroke Braves this Saturday. Coach, thanks. Best of luck to you. We'll see you Saturday. Thank you, bro. That's Pioneer Coach Frankie DeBusk. You can tune into the broadcast. We'll begin our coverage beginning at 1230 on the Pioneer Sports Network, AM 1450 WSMG, also worldwide through TuscalumPioneers.com, where you can listen to the game, you can watch the game, and you can also follow the game via live stats through the webpage. Many thanks to Cody Santmeyers. Send a shout out to him. He's uh, maybe not necessarily conquered his fear of heights, but he did a really good job getting up there high on top of Irwin Belk State, and we appreciate his efforts this week. For Nathan Humbert, for Pioneer Coach Frankie DeBusk, I'm Brian Staten. Until next week, go Pioneers. This has been the Frankie DeBusk Show with head coach Frankie DeBusk, featuring coaches' interviews, player spotlights, highlights, and statistical breakdowns. Presented by Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Your Greenville Light and Power System, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Green Coach Tours, proudly serving the traveling public since 1945. Andrew Johnson Bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Home owned and operated with locations in Johnson City, Jonesboro, Morristown, Cleveland, and Greenville. Creekside Markets. Don't pass by, stop by with three locations in Greene County. Special consideration from Comcast Cable through Xfinity. The Frankie DeBusk Show is a special presentation of the Pioneer Sports Network.